What's going on everyone, welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News regularly, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week, touching back on the Traxxas Sprint car from last week. Last week we just barely saw the first photos getting leaked and throughout the week we've seen pretty much the rest of the information. Some people have got them in their hands, there's been some running videos, some overviews and whatnot. Uh, we can confirm a lot of things in case you haven't caught all of those. It is a brand new chassis. It's got a realistic style steering where the servo is located uh, mid chassis and then it goes to a little Pittman bell crank that goes up to the front and you got another bell crank set up there to run the steering. All very realistic to how the real version of that car would have sat underneath the chassis again, all new, but with a, in, with a very wild layout. The motor sits in the back as it is a two wheel drive and it sits straight up and down. So it sits upwards and then the transmission or the spur and pinion setup is above the motor. And then it runs to a small drive shaft that goes straight down into the rear axle. Now that rear axle cycles with the suspension and that little drive shaft portion just collapses and extends to allow for the movement pretty wild to see. Now in the original look, we saw some leaf springs and those are fake. They're just there for style points. So lucked out on that one. The actual spring or shock duty is handled by those rotary dampers, which we thought were or possibly thought were actual dampers and not the spring and damper. I don't know if they'll have any damping to them at all, or if they'll just be there for the, you know, the actual spring rate. Probably so. I can't imagine that they're that much more involved than that. But either way, they function, they look good. The whole car looks great. The price on these, as you've seen on eBay and all over the place, can wildly vary. The cost from Snap-on of these is $585. So that's what the invoice price is from them. Now Snap-on dealers can mark those up and sell them to people. They can include them in raffles. They can include them if you buy a bunch of items. All over the place, these deals happen. That's the that's how Snap-on puts this and they allow their dealers to play with it as they please. So. There isn't just one way that it's done, it's all over the board, but that gives you a little bit of an idea of what these things cost at a minimum, 585. It is brushless, it comes with the new BL2S brushless system in there, so it's their tracks is just ultimate basic brushless, but they're going away from brushed setups altogether, so now that's what you see. Along with that 1920 Sprint car, there's also another snap-on exclusive that's coming and that is the Traxxas Travis Pastrana rally car. Now I haven't seen as much about this handful of photos but looks pretty decent. It's probably on that same platform that Traxxas just re-released the Fiesta on and that's a you know similar to a slash four-wheel drive type platform but with rally-esque uh, ride height, wheels, tires, body, things like that. So I imagine that's similar to what this Pastrana one is. So if you're the ultimate treasure hunter and you're trying to find all the snap on deals, there's the, there's the other one for you. Last week, I got a cryptic email from a company that I had never heard of, including a single photo and some text that said more will come. But in this email, we saw this one photo, uh, and they had some links to a website and some social media. I went to all of those, did some searching, didn't find much, but basically what I can see from this photo, which was very dark, I threw it into Lightroom, brightened it all up just to see what I could actually get out of this photo. From what I'm told, uh, or what I can deduce from these is that there's gonna something going on with this axle, obviously, as there's a great big chunk in the center of it. And whether or not we're gonna see some sort of cutting break or active diff, who knows what it could be, but it is definitely axle focused. In this photo, it looks like it is on an element platform. I can see that the element tires are specifically there. Some of the hashtags look like that's what it was focused towards as well, but very little information beyond that. So just that little bit 
it better be fancy because a big old gnarly looking center section of that axle isn't going to win any beauty contests if it uh, if it isn't. So, interested to see what else comes from this. No other information out there really at this point. So, we'll wait till we see more. And if it's interesting, I'll make sure and put it back in the news. RC 4 Wheel Drive had some new products that launched this week. First of all, the Dick CPEC 1.9. These are the FC1 tires. These are a small sub four inch 1.9 tire. Just a, another option to fit into the, the more scale lineup. The photo that they use on the website showed it mounted up to their blazer body. It fit those wheel well opening sizes pretty well. So if you've got that you know, ultra scale hard body look that you're not trying to do a bunch of fender clearancing or anything like that for, this is a tire that fits those needs. RC4 Drive also announced their Q1 giveaway. They do these giveaways, as the name would kind of lead to, four times a year. The Q1 version, they did a little promo video of their giveaway truck rolling through Visalia, which is where the RC4 Drive headquarters is located, a couple hours south of me here. And in it, it is a the hard body blazer, kind of with the uh, Carolina squat to it. Cali lean, Carolina squat. I think we'll leave it, we'll give it to the East Coast people. I don't think this name needs California in it to make it bad. <laughs> but big wheels, little tires, squatted. I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it at all. Uh, it's got the scale V8 engine under there. You know, the rest of it. It's not. <laughs> I don't imagine that this is going to be people's favorite choice of stance, wheels, tires, whatnot, but I don't know. I don't mind it. If you want to enter that giveaway, you can go check out the Ice Girl Drive site, figure out how exactly you do that, because I don't know. FMS is officially advertising the Mash again. again. Now, now, you may or may not understand why that may be noteworthy. The Mash again was released last year sometime. I'd have to look back and see exactly when, but it was a Jeep YJ clone. Just straight out. And it got shut down because obviously it was unlicensed, but it was a direct, it was unlicensed, but a direct version of the Jeep. Jeep shut it down and then it kind of went away, kind of. You could still see it. You could still find it through other back channels, not officially being sold by or posted on FMS's website until recently. I saw that on their social media, they had the post of the mash again up on their page, which they have not had for a very long time. Again, you can find it through other places, just not in them directly. So it'd be interesting to see if there is any changes, the grill, all that looks the same. I don't see any Jeep licensing badges posted anywhere, anything like that. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. We'll see what happened. Something has to have transpired there or they're just like, nah, send it again. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I'm kind of interested to find out, watch along, see what happens. Kyosho just released the new Sandmaster 2.0 ready to run. Always had a soft spot for these old style buggies. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the Sandmaster 1.0, just a scale old dune buggy style. I had a version of one of these as a kid. I'm not sure who it was made by. I was too young to really appreciate it. But to me, that has always been like the RC car that like if I was imagining an RC car and I knew nothing about what I, that is the one that I still imagine. So I still kind of appreciate this one. I don't think that this is overly high grade, higher than toy grade, I believe, but I don't know that it's wildly beyond that. So maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's just their color choices and the way it's kind of styled that throws me that way. But if you have any experience with the 1.0, I'd be interested to know how far back does that go? When was it out? Was it any good? J Concepts throwing us two new releases this week. These are two new tires, both 2.2, both 5.25 inches tall. So they sit on that shorter side of the 2.2. This is a tire that will be a popular choice possibly for class three Sorka type events. Those events now require you to run a tire that is larger than 4.75. 
previously, you could just run a 475 in class three as well, and that was a popular choice. Now, you have to run something taller, and this might be an option. Also, some people just like a taller tire, and with that, sometimes a taller wheel is going to be the better choice for you know side, hill, side wall stability and things like that. The tusk is one of them, and the tusk is shown on a body that I don't recognize. It looks very compy, meaning that it's got you know pinched front and rear design. It is Lloyd-esque, but good. So the opposite looks pretty interesting. I don't, don't hate this design at all. Some style thrown into it. Proportions look pretty decent. Let's wait for more information, unless I just missed it, but I'm pretty sure that that's a new body. And then the other one is the Scorpio, and they also released the same size, 5.25 inches tall. Scorpio is another tread pattern that they've had for some time. Not quite as popular as the Tusk, if I'm you know, going by what you see online the most. So uh, two new options for you. Maybe one will work better in the train you run in than the other. So you can check those out, jconcepts.net. Don't let it fool, not, talk, not dot com. SSD had some new releases this week. They have some parts that are specifically aimed towards you RC four wheel drive owners. They released a machined version of the RC four wheel drive Yoda two axle center section. I believe that this shows the front. I'm not sure if they did the rear as well, but this is a machined version of that cast axle. So you'll still take your third member and that little like diff cover piece off and you'd put it onto this axle housing. So should be stronger, keep from breaking the ears off or things like that. They also brought out some heavy weight brass knuckles for those Yoda 2s. And they brought out some knuckles with the you know, same design for the K44 axles. So if you're looking to add a little weight, test the durability, some other parts, SSD has got some tools for you. A few weeks back, we talked about the T-Wolf M715. We had very little information on it, but some more has come to light since then. Once I put it in the news, they actually contacted me like the next morning with a number of kind of more detailed photos. And since then, I've also seen them post up that's available for pre-order. From what I can understand or have translated with Google Translate, it looks like this is being pre-ordered for $2,000 on this one. Uh, the price had seemed to kind of vary at other sources, but what I'm seeing is $2,000. I'm not sure if that's a discounted price or not. They did send me some other just cell phone photos, not necessarily complete product style photography, but shows you some more of the detail. Still don't have a ton of information, still haven't found like official web pages put up where to order, details like that. Lots and lots of machined parts on this, Hellcat style motor under the hood that's very detailed, you know, transmission tunnel, all machined as well. Uh, the body, not sure exactly how it's produced, whether it's a, a cast, you know, die cast or machined or what. But hopefully we get some more information on that thing before too long. Hyundai has got a new RC car for all of us. This is the Hyundai Vision N74. You may have seen, you know, concept sketches or drawings or renderings of this car like last year sometime, and now they're doing an RC car version of it. At this time, I believe it's only available in Korea, but I am told that it's supposed to come to the United States before too long. After the announcement, some of the articles went up. I did also see that Charisma had posted something about this, and from there was able to determine that Charisma is the manufacturer of this platform for or in collaboration with Hyundai. And that's not the first time that Charisma has done something like, like this. They also did that for the Cybertruck RC back several years ago. I could probably look up the episode, but another you know, tidbit there. It should come available in the US before too long, but at this point, it doesn't look like there's a way that you can order it directly. Also, it still has body pins out the top. This Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, come join Matt and I for live stream takeover. Another good week ahead. It's been busy in the RC industry with plenty of discussion topics, and I believe that we have some more stuff to discuss this week still to come. So make sure and check in on the live show. Looking forward to it once again. This week, Jared Tebow, who if you're into the racing side, you probably are aware of 
He's been a professional racer for a very long time, made a big name for himself. I don't believe that he races anymore, but now he does have his own line or brand of RC products. And he had put a post up that made the rounds through some shares and a couple of the news sites about the status of sponsorship and RC racing these days. And it was a nice post, nothing too strongly worded one way or the other, depending on how you feel about it. But uh, just an interesting perspective on someone who started, came up through the racing side, made a name for himself, a full-time career, retired and now runs a company and has the racers coming to him for that same type of you know, scenario or support, even though times now are different. And that's kind of along the lines of what I wanted to talk about this week for this week's question. The world of RC is very different than it was even when I started. I started in RC later than many of you, I'm sure. 2004 was when I got into RC. And when I got in, it was for RC rock crawling. That's where I started. That's where I still stay. That's my area that I like the most. But it's a very different world. Partially, I feel like, because social media changed how, you know, companies got exposure. So when it used to be magazines and things like that, you know, professional racers, race results, your photo, whatever it was that was winning is what, you know, you hoped got into magazines and things like that. Now, social media is instant. Everyone has the same access to it. Anyone can build their own version of a community. And looking more at our side, the scale, you know, the competition rock crawling side, wherever you kind of reside in our bubble, let's call it, it can still be very different than how it ever was before. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of those avenues are places that you could possibly provide exposure to a company or a product, no matter who it is. And the number of RC brands now far exceeds what it ever was before because at-home manufacturing is cheaper than it's ever been as well with 3D printers and CNC routers and all of the other ways that you could run a company that could be focused on RC, let alone the avenues that you can use to sell those products that you make. But with all of that set up to the story, the question comes in is, when is too much too much? When there's so many brands from the little guy just making something in his garage to someone who's got themselves a retail space finally, or has started having to get help with the manufacturing of his products, whatever it may be. When does all of it just get blurred with the amount of it that you see through social media of any sort? How do you as a consumer decide out of all of the things that you see in a day, what is best for you? because a lot of these parts you don't get to see in hand. You just have to go by what you see, look and read on the internet and hit the click buy now button. It's just an interesting area to zoom in on from time to time. It's not something that's unique to our hobby at all. It's in every facet of our day-to-day -day life. There's not just a single question in any of that. So your opinion on any area or how you feel about sponsorship as a whole, the word sponsorship, the ambassadors, whatever it may be. Drop your thoughts below. Be interesting to read how you guys feel about this in your day to day. But with that, as always, thanks for watching the scale news update. If you enjoy the show, hit the like button and subscribe. If you're not already hit the notification bell. So you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. And as always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.